Hello and welcome to What's Up at the Wow Center. I'm Bill Fisher, the Executive Director, and today we're going to talk more about what's been up at the Wow Center since we just completed our 2011-2012 Performing Arts Series. This year we did something a little different and we presented 15 shows, three, or five, three series, each with five shows in them, in a family category, a music category, and a theater category. Now, that was a very exciting season. We had a lot of new things happen to us, and we want to share with you uh, at the end of uh, the program today, a video that shows 16 hours on the Wow Center stage that is compressed to 16 minutes. And you'll be amazed at how much happens in that time period to put up a show, put a great Broadway musical on, and then take that show down. And we'll show you that all in just 16 minutes through the magic of time-lapse photography. Now, if you've attended one of our shows this year at the Wow Center, you will probably be come in contact with one of our great volunteers. They sell tickets for us, they uh, take your tickets, they take you to your seat, they sell you concessions, and without those volunteers, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. But today, I'm going to introduce you to two of our key staff members. Without these staff members, nothing would ever get uh, put on the stage and we would never be able to see the wonderful shows that we, the Wow Center brings to this community. Now, I'm going to be joined today by our uh, ticket and marketing manager, ticket office marketing manager, Chris Krenz, and also Kim Meller, our events and operations manager. Each one of them have very unique jobs, and it takes them to places during a show that you might not have ever thought that we had to go to in order to bring the show to you. Uh, what I'd like to do is talk to each one of them today about what their highlights were this year in our three series uh, programs. So Chris, I want to start with you. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, we uh, had three distinct series this year, and uh, let's start with the family series. What was your highlight in the family series from a marketing and ticket office manager perspective? It's hard to pick a particular show throughout the entire season because we had so many great shows this year. But if I, and I use different barometers when I gauge the popularity of a show, not just based on ticket sales, but it's also based on feedback I, we get from patrons after a show, as well as watching patrons in the audience during the show. So yeah. all those things really affect my opinion of how a show is. But in thinking about our family series, I would have to say that Kevin Spencer's Theater of Illusion was a pretty awesome show with some great feedback. Um, not only were they a great couple to have come into the theater, they were very complimentary about the Wild Center. They travel with a state-of-the-art rig that they keep all their equipment on, which if you were in the parking lot, you, you wouldn't miss it. Mm -hmm. And once they unloaded all that equipment on stage, now I can't give away any secrets as to <laughs> any of their tricks, but they certainly were dramatic and they did some sensational illusions and the audience came away saying, how'd they do that? So I, I think that was a great family show. And, and that was probably the most well-attended family series event we had this year. I believe it was. It, there was something for everybody in that show. And then in the music series, uh, there were some great uh, performers in that series, and it's probably tough to pick one. But That, that really is tough, but I think maybe because it's one of my personal favorites, but I think we had a great audience reaction to Ricky Nelson remembered. Oh, yes. That was a real trip down memory lane because it covered a lot of generations from the Ozzie and Harriet generation to their dad who they were portraying that evening, Ricky Nelson, right. and then they themselves had their own group, Nelson. So they crossed a lot of decades of audience and they were wonderful. Gunner and Matthew were just wonderful to have as entertainers in the theater. They stayed till every last patron was out. Yes. Um, they took the audience truly on a trip down memory lane with their video clips, and, and they were great performers in and of themselves. So that was there were a lot awesome. of flash bobs going off in the lobby that night there afterwards. Were. They were, they uh, everyone were. wanted a picture with the twins, yeah. and yeah. Yeah, they're very photogenic, so it was a yeah, great, they, they were easy. great yeah. all around. Yeah. Yeah. And then our final, our theater series, uh, there's a lot of great, great diversity and, and shows in that series, so. Again, another difficult one to pick a favorite of, 
but what stands out to me is the Rat Pack, Sandy Hackett's Rat Pack. Oh, yes. Sandy Hackett being Buddy Hackett's son, mm -hmm. who pr wrote and produced the Rat Pack show. Um, they were very easy to work with. It was easy to market that show because they were so good about getting us material as mm -hmm. far as biographies and pictures and things like that that we could use to promote the show. But it was an easy promotion because, again, the generation that was familiar with the Rat Pack right. show got to relive that whole era of song and jokes and shtick that Sammy and Frank and Dean and Joey did. Yeah. So, again, feedback after the show was awesome and please Fantastic. bring them back again. And you mentioned the promotional stuff and that is primarily a lot of what you spend your time doing months yes. before the season even starts and even our season brochures, uh, you know, months before we announce it, we're putting together those materials and that's not a, that's not a small task uh, to get uh, accurate information to really share that with people. Right, so, right. A lot uh, of research goes into putting those brochures. Anytime you were to look at this brochure, you would know that uh, or any of our materials that Chris Krenz had a hand in it. Right, so right, thank you. Right, you're welcome. Now shifting over to um, Kim, who is our events and operations manager. A lot of people don't really know all that you do, um, and uh, we're going to we're going to share some of that with this video at the end of, of the end of the show here. But uh, tell us from your perspective, in what you do for the theater, uh, what your favorites were within each of the series. Okay, we really had a great year. Um, working with the family, the music, and the theater productions. Um, when an organization comes into our theater, um, we are taking care of them for the day. We start by welcoming them, welcoming them into the, the, the building, onto the stage, getting set up, using our volunteers, um, possibly to help on the stage, but to get our, our tech people supported, our lighting people, sound, and then right through the end of the show, I think when we started this year's um, family programming, the Mermaid Theater's uh, Good Night Moon and Runaway Bunny really sticks out for me. Um, I thought it was a beautiful production that we, that we gave to the community. Um, families came in. Uh, we had uh, about 350 second graders coming in on Monday after the family performance on Sunday afternoon. But all the while this is going on, we also have a very sick tech director, oh. stage manager from Nova Scotia. She was um, such a trooper, and she was just in agony. So the minute the show was over on Sunday afternoon, we rushed her to the hospital. Oh my. She ended up having emergency surgery that oh. evening. We took care of the group during the course of the evening, and all of this time we're working with insurance companies in Canada <laughs> and the United States. Yeah giving her good care and, and making her feel as good as possible about having all of this done. We turn around the next morning, we present to the 350 second graders, and our own tech crew ends up supporting that organization through the show with help from people in Nova Scotia on the phone. Wow. So it was really a nice collaboration. We did, our people did such a great job, they were asked to go and help continue on in other productions in other cities. So we all work together. It's truly, the show must go on in that, in that case. Uh, and, and a lot of people don't realize that that happens behind the scenes, but it happens more often than, than you know. Mm -hmm. and it's one of the things that makes our jobs you know, different every day. Different and every, every show day. is different. <laughs> so about the music series. The music series. Uh, I got a big kick out of um, this year seeing us uh, also put together a master class to go mm -hmm. along with the Family Generations show of George and Kiyoki. Oh yes. The, the Hawaiian, Hawaiian slack key guitar masters. Um, and they're both pretty accomplished on ukulele also. So we had a show on a Saturday evening at 7.30, but at two o'clock in the afternoon, we offered a master class to over 25 people. Um, I believe that I remember now that it lasted about two and a half hours. Yeah, it was supposed to be an hour. An hour. It kept going come out and till going. <laughs> they had a time. great time. Uh, George and Kiyoki both um, show the Hawaiian tradition of sharing and giving and they, they just kept giving of their talents and, and telling stories um, very much the way I believe the Hawaiians really must be. And, I, and I'll tease a little bit, we are going to have a little bit more of this next season and we'll talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. And then in the theater series we had 
and know which one you're going to talk about and uh, talk just briefly about it because people are going to get to see what you're talking about. Right. But which one was it? Damn Yankees was certainly an explosion onto our stage that day. Um, we had to actually hire about 26 people to come in and help out, put on our payroll for the day. And what it ended up being was unloading of a huge semi onto our stage with the props, everything going well. Their production team met our stage crew. I think that everybody was a little nervous at first. Um, their, their production crew said that they never, or they don't usually work with um, so many um, community members is mm -hmm. the way they referred to us, as opposed to a union house, which right. the Wild Center is not. And it started out where everybody was testing the waters, but our group was great in the end. After everything was said and done, uh, it worked out very well, very well. And we were congratulated on the great efforts that our team put forth. It, there's a lot of listening involved. Um, there's only one boss, and that boss is from the other team. Yeah. <laughs> and he runs the show, and we were congratulated on their way out the door that the, everything went very well beautiful setup with many singers, uh, live orchestra in the live pit, in which the was pit. wonderful with a conductor, and it was just a, a wonderful Broadway show to bring to the Wild Center. And that was really the first time that that size show and that complexity of a, of a theatrical production had been on, on the Wild Center stage, from what I understood. Yes, um, yes. And we're really excited because today we're going to share with you that 16 hours in just 16 minutes and uh, we had a, a, a static camera that time-lapsed the uh, the day as it progressed it stays on the stage and it gives you a couple pictures of the show at the actual show mm -hmm. but um, it's really neat and uh, Julian Yetzer our, our technical director put it to music for us uh, and it's gonna be a real treat and we're gonna share that with with the audience today and then when we come back from that uh, we're going to talk a little tiny bit about next season not going to be able to give you details, but uh, give you enough to get you to keep watching what's up at the Wild Center. So let's go, uh, thank you, Kim and Chris, and let's go thank look you, at that uh, 16 minutes of, uh, of 16 hours in the life of the Wild Center stage.
hope you enjoyed that. I uh, hope you'll join us for the next episode of What's Up at the Wow Center when, I will tell you, we will be announcing those shows. So look in June for our uh, What's Up at the Wow Center episode where we announce what we're coming. But also, as you might have seen this year's brochure, um, look for next year's brochure. It'll look something like this. It hit your mailboxes in early June, and hopefully we'll see you at the Wow Center next year for our 2012-2013 season. And join us again some other time for What's Up at the Wow Center.